Hey guys, welcome back to the channel, and today I want to share with you guys some battery saving tips in iOS 13. iOS 13 brought some new options and new behaviors to the OS, and I thought this type of video deserved an update. There's a few things that I want to share with you guys that you may be doing wrong on your iPhone that will help you preserve the battery life and the battery health of your iPhone in iOS 13. So let's get to it. And before we continue with today's video, I have a gift for you guys. Stick around towards the end of the video. Today's video was sponsored by Ugreen. They sent me five of these packages that contain their power delivery charger, their fast chargers inside, and I'm going to be giving away five of these gift boxes. Right here they are. Stick around towards the end of the video for more information. Let me show you the presentation. Here's what the box looks like. That's what's inside, and right there it is, the Ugreen logo, the smart charging. Very nice presentation. I like this a lot. Again, thank you to Ugreen for sponsoring today's video and actually hosting a giveaway on my channel. That was very, very kind. Let's go ahead and open the box and show you what comes inside. Again, this will be a giveaway absolutely free you can participate worldwide i'll have more information towards the end of the video but there it is only for you very nice presentation inside we have the 18 watt charger now compare that to a 5 watt charger that comes inside of the box of your iphone this will charge your iphone super super fast i'll link their website in the description they have a ton of great products and uh, yes i'm very very happy to announce that i'll be having a chance to give these away to five of you lucky subscribers here is the actual cable that comes Comes with the gift as well we have the lightning to USB type C and these are all Apple certified by the way so thank you very much to you green for sponsoring today's video so let's begin with some of my favorite battery saving tips in iOS 13 so the first thing I want to talk about is how to preserve the battery health of the battery inside of your iPhone of course this is very important you want the battery health of your iPhone to be the highest possible right the highest capacity possible so how do you preserve the battery capacity and the battery health on your iPhone well there's two things I like to say number one you want to make sure you don't always have your iPhone charged at 100% all the time. It is okay for your iPhone's battery to actually drain completely every once in a while. So maybe in a month, use your iPhone completely till the battery dies at least three times out of the month. So the battery drains completely and then you can recharge it completely as well. Having your battery charged at 100% all the time is not a good idea. You want to go ahead and use that battery up on your iPhone and let it drain properly and then cycle back and recharge the entire device for your battery to maintain its charging cycles correctly. Now, there's another option built into iOS 13 here under the battery health, which is the optimized battery option, which I have this option on all the time. Now, what this will do, for those of you that do not know, this will charge your iPhone up to 80%, not 100, but to 80%. And the other 20% will be charged maybe an hour before you pick up your phone in the morning, therefore preserving the battery health of your iPhone. Even Apple is telling you, do not keep your iPhone at 100% all the time. They added this feature for a reason. And those two options are very important. Use your iPhone's battery, never have it at 100% all the time, and let it drain every now and then. Like I said, maybe three times out of the month, just use your iPhone until it powers off on its own, the battery's completely drained, and use that optimized battery feature built into iOS 13. And I guarantee your battery health would be a lot better in the future. Now, with all that being said, we also want the battery of our iPhones to last us all day. And there's a few things you can do to do that as well. I'm going to show you a few behaviors that you can practice on your iPhone in order to preserve the battery throughout the day. Number one, of course, we know the standards. Turn off Bluetooth and Wi-Fi and all the options that you're not using at the moment. So for example, if you're on a flight, you can go to settings and actually turn off Wi-Fi from here, turn off Bluetooth, and turn off everything that you're currently not using, even location services, if you're not using them. I like to go actually right here to the privacy tab and I like to go to location services and scroll all the way down and turn off all these options under system services these options here right there right here all these analytics and nearby and traffic information if you do not use Apple Maps you can turn all these off as well as significant location these are constantly tracking location and uh, by tracking location that means your battery's being drained other options you may want to consider turning off are under iTunes and App Store right here under the automatic downloads these are constantly tracking for new music, new apps, new books and audiobooks, and new app 
updates. So if it's constantly tracking for these and automatically downloading these, this will actually drain the battery of your iPhone. So if you don't necessarily use these services like I do not, I like to download my apps and update my apps at my convenience when I'm connected to Wi-Fi and plugged into a power source. So I turn all of these off and it helps preserve the battery of your iPhone because it's not constantly tracking for these services or updates in the background. Now this next one is more of a common behavior that I see many iOS users do. When launching an application, once they're done with it, they go to the app switcher and quit the app. This is a bad thing to do for many reasons. Now many users believe that when they quit the app from the app switcher, it means that it's no longer running in the background and no longer taking up battery and freeing up some of the performance. And in some cases this is true, but your iPhone app switcher is programmed a little different and I'm gonna explain here why this is not a good idea. When you launch the application on your iPhone, for example, the app store here, you see how quickly that loaded up. I did not have to wait for the iPhone to actually load the application. So if I go into the app store, switcher and I quit the app and go back into the app store, this is going to reload, as you see there, reload the application instead of just taking off where it left off, right? So when you go to the app switcher and this application is running in the app switcher, is not really running in the background until you invoke the app and it'll take off from that point and reload some of the data that's missing, but it doesn't take the entire process of reloading all the data. So when you quit the app and go back, it's just gonna constantly use more CPU, constantly use more batteries. So it's a common misperception that many users just quit their app and they believe, well, I'm safe now. The battery's not gonna be drained and no, it doesn't work that way. iOS is programmed to freeze the applications until you kick them back into action. So for example, if I go to the clock and start a timer here, you see the timer's running. Immediately after I kick this application into the app switcher, boom, the app switcher will bring the actual application and it will be frozen. You see that? It's frozen in time. It's still running somewhat in the background, but it doesn't kick into action until, boom, we put it back into action. It doesn't have to reload all the data. It doesn't necessarily run entirely all the time in the background so this will help preserve the battery of your iPhone believe it or not just let them run in the background as it is intended by iOS other options I like to turn off for example if I'm going on a long trip and I won't have a charger near me I like to go to settings and turn off Siri in search suggestions and also the listening command for Siri as well the listening command I turn it off because it's constantly trying to listen for that command so it uses more power running in the background trying to do that if I'm going to need my iPhone for a longer period of time throughout the day without having a charger near me that is an option you may want to consider turning off as well as Siri suggestions so these suggestions of course are all throughout iOS when you see them they try to help you figure out what it is that you want next Siri is trying to constantly help you figure out what it is that you want to do and they're great I like Siri suggestions but when I'm going on a long trip or something as I mentioned where I'm not going to be having a charger near me I turn these off because that takes up power from your iPhone so now they're no longer there it's not running constantly trying to figure out what's going on and what I want to do next. So Siri suggestions and Siri listening commands is one of those things that I turn off when I'm not going to be close to a charger and I need my iPhone all day. Now there are some applications in iOS that constantly fetch for data if you allow them to. And this is great because this means more information will be provided to you the moment you invoke the application. However, if you're going to be away from a charger throughout the day and you need your iPhone to last a little longer, you may want to consider going to settings, heading on over to general and a background app refresh. This option here you can turn off in the settings and this will prevent any of the apps that do fetch for data on your iPhone to not fetch for data. Again, this is an option you may want to consider while you're far away from a charger throughout the entire day. And when you get back home, you can enable this option because you can also enable it only while connected to Wi-Fi, therefore faster performance, and it doesn't take as much power from your iPhone. And those are some of the tips that I wanted to share with you guys. Now let's talk about the giveaway. Okay, so how do you win one of these fast chargers, the power delivery chargers from Ugreen with a D-Lightning to USB Type-C cable? Here are the five boxes. I'm giving away the five boxes right here. Again, the giveaway is worldwide. It doesn't matter where you live. I'll ship this out to you. Again, big thanks to you, Green, for sponsoring this video and sponsoring this giveaway here on the channel. Today is August the 31st, and all you have to do is click the like button on this video. Number two, share the video on social media, and number three, leave a comment down below. I'll be selecting a winner a week from the filming and launching of this video. Today is August 31st, 
2019. I'll be selecting the winner on September the 7th of 2019. You can come back and leave a comment every day if you want one comment per day. Again, all you have to do is leave a comment, share the video on social media, and number three, click the like button, and that is it. Once again, thank you guys for watching this video. I hope you guys enjoyed the tips, and good luck to everyone. I'll see you on the next one. Peace.